And welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you in the second hour of our program. On the line with us, uh, Dr. Eric Feigelding, the epidemiologist and health economist, adjunct senior fellow at the American Federation of Scientists. I follow him on Twitter where he's got one of the better uh, Twitter uh, uh, feeds or whatever you call it. Uh, it. You know, if you want to be updated on what's going on with this pandemic, his uh, Twitter handle is Dr. Uh, Dr. Eric, E-R-I-C, Ding, D-I-N-G, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G. Dr. Eric Feigelding, welcome back to the program. So uh, I'm, I'm reading uh, a whole bunch of stuff all over the internet. You know, the, the Delta variant has made herd immunity impossible. Um, you know, what mm -hmm. do we know about this Delta variant? It's, it, it, I, you know, young people are getting sick, kid, you know, ICUs and children's hospitals are filling up. It seems like it's almost a brand new disease. Yeah, it is a bit. Uh, I call it pandemic 2.0 because it is so many ways it is worse than before. It is more contagious, twice as contagious. Um, when I say twice, I mean like exponentially twice. Instead of, you know, one person passing on to three or four, it's now one person passing on to six to nine uh, per each additional cycle. And it's much more severe it's for unvaccinated. It's about four times greater risk of um, of hospitalization, and even among those who are infected, it is much more severe than before. Uh, there's a lot more breakthrough cases than before, and obviously, even with big breakthroughs, the hospitalization efficacy prevention with the vaccines is lower than before. Instead of 99, it's now like 90 percent protection against hospitalization. And, uh, and again, kids are also infected a lot more than the old strain. So altogether, it's kind of like the worst of both worlds that is much more contagious and more severe and more vaccine penetrant. So I got a, a note this morning from uh, my best friend who lives in Manhattan, uh, has his whole life. And uh, he, he, you know, he's, he's a little, he's my age more or less, you know, in his 70s. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, he went into his pharmacy this morning and said, I'm old <laughs> and I want a booster. I want a third shot. <laughs> and they were like, cool. And they whipped it out and stuck it in his arm. Um, it seems that uh, this is happening, this, this booster thing. And the government is talking yeah. about making it official. Um, what's the deal? Uh, you know, uh, what, is the, what, what does the epidemiology tell us? What does science tell us about whether people who are over 60 should get a, a third shot or whether people who are on um, yeah. medication that suppresses things like rheumatoid arthritis or plaque psoriasis and therefore it just suppresses mm -hmm. the entire immune system should get a third shot or, you know, or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what is, what, what's the yeah, deal? Definitely, I, I, definitely uh, there's a lot of evidence that there's waning immunity, um, both over time as well as uh, among the elderly. The efficacy was always a little bit weaker in the elderly, and especially the immunocompromised. Uh, so if you, even if you're not elderly, you have taking immunosuppressive drugs, have certain conditions like can blood cancers, you should definitely get another shot. So uh, the FDA in the U.S. officially recommended a uh, third shot for those with these immune uh, conditions. But in other countries like Israel, they are already starting the shot for the elderly uh, as well. And many European countries are also starting a third shot for anyone over the age of 50 or 60, 65. So it's definitely something you need. And the other thing is, you know, over once you're over six months, there is significant waning. Um, and that we've seen it not just in elderly, but also young people. So there's about the breakthrough rates are twice as high if you're fully vaccinated um, in January or earlier versus fully vaccinated recently. Mm. So th th it is an issue. And, you know, if you're recently vaccinated and you're young, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, if you're elderly and, you know, your last shot was five or six months ago, I would start considering another shot, even though it's not officially recommended in the U.S., but it's widely done worldwide. Yeah, and so apparently there's not a, a downside to this. People aren't getting horrible reactions to the third shot or things no, like that. No, no. They already had two shots. Uh, they, they, like, if you had reactions, it would have already happened earlier. What about the, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I've seen uh, actually uh, multiple articles in the, in the pop press, you know, about people who are trying to mix and match people who got the Pfizer yeah. vaccine and now they're trying to get the J&J because &J it's a different t technology. It's a different, you know, and, and, and it targets yeah. a different part of the immune system. It's, it's like a maybe uh, issue because there, 
is evidence that if you went from, for example, AstraZeneca to Pfizer, it, the benefits are stronger than if you got two AstraZeneca. Although that doesn't happen in the U.S. because we don't have AstraZeneca. Mm-hmm. But there is some evidence that, you know, Moderna, interestingly, has a little bit higher protection against Delta than, than Pfizer. Mm-hmm. We don't know if it's because Moderna people were always asked to delay their second shot by four weeks, while Pfizer, the second shot could come within three weeks. So we don't know if it, if the difference is due to that reason or because they're very similar vaccines. Yeah. Now, the Johnson & Johnson is obviously a little bit more different, but Johnson & Johnson by itself is, you know, if you were doing a one-shot to one-shot before, uh, you know, Pfizer, Moderna always had the higher one-shot efficacy versus Johnson & Johnson. But it is a strategy some people are doing. I don't recommend it because there's not much data on it. But mm-hmm. I think the third shot right now that most people are doing is a third shot of the, the mRNA. And mixing Moderna and Pfizer is, is pretty common in many countries. What does all this tell us about life in this world going forward, Dr. Feigelding? Uh, you yeah. and I, last time we talked, we talked about the difference between endemic and pandemic and, and epidemic. Yeah. Um, uh, any new thoughts on that? It's, it's one of those things where we're trying to work our way through because th- there's, if, if we have highly vaccinated populations, I think we could keep it suppressed and not have it run wild and occasionally have a few hospitalizations uh, with some rare breakthrough cases. But in in many ways, if half the population like the U.S., especially in the Deep South, more than half, are not vaccinated, then the the actual number of hospital beds and deaths and long COVID, long COVID, don't forget, you get Mm -hmm. even if you don't get hospitalized, is going to be this mounting astronomical burden that will just accumulate sort of like polio so was i think in we the have 50s. A, we're at a fork in a row um, between what kind of future do we want and the other thing is you know you say oh we go build natural immunity but yeah you know we did that before but then delta came and now there's also other uh things like lambda um and you know israel says if lambda surges in Israel, they're going to lockdown. Even they don't care if they're seventy percent vaccinated. They're going to lockdown. La- lambda surges. What's the difference so between Israel lambda and delta? I, I know nothing about the lambda variant. Yeah, so lambda is this other new variant that is increasing in South America in a few countries, and it's in the U.S. too. But it's not as fast moving as delta, but it could be potentially aggressive. So they're trying to see: is can we hold lambda in check? But if Lambda is outpacing Delta, and Delta is a very fast, contagious one that has basically outpaced all the previous ones, they almost are almost extinct. Mm-hmm. If Lambda surges and faster than Delta, that, that spells trouble. Basically, is, if it's faster than Delta, it's going to be a problem. Is Lambda then, uh, are you suggesting or saying that Lambda is more capable of evading vaccines or producing we, illness in vaccines? We, we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. Like a lab study does not equal real world. And the problem is that with Lambda, there are some bad properties to it. Mm -hmm. It's not surging worldwide, but it's it's upticking, let's just say, in in certain places. And, you know, in certain ways, a a Delta was upticking. And then we realized, oh, crap, this is more than just an uptick. This is going to be a global surge in Two million people, three million people in India died within just two months in April and May because of Delta. So we have to be really wary what's on the horizon. And we have to really, really vaccinate or else if we don't do that, we're in a world of trouble. Right. So tell everybody you know who is vaccine hesitant, which seems like a bizarre phrase, but whatever. You know, know, we need to get America vaccinated. And, And if you've had the two shots, if you can work it out with your doctor and your pharmacist, consider a third shot. Particularly if you're over 60, is that the bottom line? Uh, yeah, many countries are doing it. I think U.S. should do it soon too. Yeah.